brought to you by Next Lines, video lighting tools for filmmakers. And now, your feature presentation. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Scene, where we teach you Hollywood techniques on an indie film budget. I'm your host, Tony Reale, and today we're going to teach you how we did a nine-camera shoot with only five cameras for a recent concert shoot that we produced. Uh, this concert was for a band called Separate Ways, which is a Journey tribute band, and they're actually good friends with us. Uh, we've done a lot of projects with them in the past, and uh, they came to us and wanted to do a high-energy, really, really awesome concert shoot. They had done one before. Uh, that was just a four camera shoot at a local church, and it was really wasn 't the energy that they were looking for, and so they wanted to do something new modern and uh, and they really liked the work that we 've done and so they asked us if we could produce this now they didn 't have any budget to work with uh, and because we were friends with them, we did the project pro bono, but because we 're doing it pro bono, that means for me i didn 't want to have uh, any additional costs on my end. So we worked with all the camera gear that we had. I didn't want to do any rentals. I just wanted to, again, work with everything that I had already available to me. So in that, I went through my list of cameras available uh, that we already owned, and we had an XA10, we had a 5D Mark II, we had actually two of those, and then we had a 60D. So we had four cameras to work with. Um, and so I, I knew, though, that four cameras would not still give the energy that they wanted. We, we wanted to be able to cut every few seconds and have lots and lots of shots to work with. And four cameras, eventually you're going to start seeing the same shots revolving in and out, and it's just not going to work. So what we decided to do was to the, do two separate shoots and combine the footage together. The first one that we did was the rehearsal. And this was a full dress rehearsal, full lights, everything was running as if it was the night of the concert. Uh, but because this was a rehearsal, we could all move all the cameras closer to the stage and we could shoot on stage as well. The stage that we were working at was not very large. So during the concert, it was not easy for the for camera operators to jump up on the stage and get some tight shots. So we knew we were going to want to get all those shots during the rehearsal. We've got all the cameras up close. Uh, the dolly is actually that we're going to move this even closer. Um, this is the 5D Mark II on the dolly. Uh, we've got the XA10 over here on the uh, remote pan tilt head, so that's going to do some cool jib flyovers. Uh, we got 5D Mark II over here. This is going to be buried kind of in the in the stage, uh, giving some really cool close-up shots that we couldn't do normally during the concert, otherwise it would be very distracting. And uh, then we're going to have Jimmy with 60D. He's going to be floating around too, getting some really cool shots. Because I know how to use this. Yep, he's amazing. <laughs> Best camera output that we have. Uh, so, we are ready to get started. You guys ready? For that, I had two cameras that were on stage. I had a 5D Mark II with a 24 to 105 f4 lens on it, and that one stayed pretty much wide the whole time. Then we also had our 60D with a 50 millimeter f1.4 on that, and that got a lot of the tight shots, um, close-ups of of the dis different instruments, and and also because it was a f1.4 lens, it had a nice out of focus background, so. Uh, very artistic shots opportunities for those. Uh, we also had a 5D Mark II on uh, the floor in front of the stage that was on a dolly and handheld, and that got some cool perspective shots. And then I had my XA10 on my Kessler pocket jib. Uh, at the time, I didn't have anything longer than that to work with, and again, I didn't have a rental budget. So I put my pocket jib at full extension, put my uh, XA10 on there, and I had uh, my remote pan tilt head that I put on there as well. Now with the XA10, you know, it is a pro camera, but it isn't super high end. So what I ended up doing was I had it set on autofocus, but I locked off the exposure. Uh, the advantage of using the XA10 also is it allowed me to use a zoom rocker um, at the control end of the jib. So I was able to do nice zooms and not slow zooms, fast zooms, stuff like that. Uh, stuff that I wouldn't have been able to do with a DSLR very easily. So that's why I put the XA10 on the jib. I could do the, the pans, the tilts with the remote head, zoom in and out. The exposure was locked off. I made sure that I, I, I had them put all the lights on, locked off where the exposure needed to be, and then I let the autofocus run. And for the most part, it did pretty good. There was a couple of times where it you know, didn't hit where it needed to be, but for the most part, the autofocus worked great. Or Jimmy, give us a breakdown of what's going on. We what's are happening? soldering two wires, positive and negative, to a motor. The problem was, is that the rubber ends right there, these terminals on the up, on, were actually not making a good contact. The more, there was more rubber involved than there was uh, 
steel or metal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got our on stage shots, we got our front stage shots, and then we uh we took a break, had dinner, and then we moved on to the actual concert shoot where the whole uh, the whole audience was there, high energy, and this is where I want everybody to start getting wider shots. Uh, I, mo- I backed up the jib opposite side of the room and, and behind the crowd um, so that I was able to get it feeling like it was a totally different perspective and, and position than the other jib shot was. And the other nice thing about that too is it, it allowed me to get some cool crowd shots as well. And uh, one thing that I did, I had the jib on a platform because I didn't have a taller jib uh, the platform allowed me to kind of get above the crowd and get some higher shots that I wouldn't have been able to do had I been right on the floor. Uh, we also had our 60D now with a 70-200 f4 lens, and that was kind of the safety shot. That allowed me to to get uh, just the band. That's our go-to shot when no other camera was available. And then the two 5Ds were uh, on in the crowd getting crowd react shots, getting low angles of the band, stuff like that. So they were just floating around the stage. Um, in front of the stage for most of the rest of the shoot. And last camera that we used was a GoPro. Sean had the idea to do basically what we call a drum cam, and we mounted it to the truss behind the drum, and they gave a really, really cool perspective to see the drummer, to see the crowd, to see the band, and we cut to that every once in a while. Obviously, since that one's locked off, it, it you know everybody knows what that camera is going to look like, and you can't cut to it too very often, but it's a really cool perspective for some epic moments in the songs to be able to, to cut to that one, and that gave us a nine-camera shoot instead of the eight-camera that we would have had with the two sets of four cameras prior to that so all in all we actually had a great great shoot everything worked pretty well uh there were a couple issues that we ran into uh of course with they were using a lot of led lighting on the stage i made sure they weren't using lasers so i didn't have to worry about uh anything burning into one of our sensors Um, but the led lighting um had issues with the uh, refresh rate um on the camera Basically, because it was a 60 hertz electrical frequency going through it, we had to keep our shutters at 1 60th of a second. And occasionally, uh, one of our operators, when adjusting their exposure, um, may have accidentally changed their shutter speed, which then caused a banding issue in that. Uh, another issue that we ran into was uh, with the bass and the crowd kind of going crazy. The floor was wooden, and it wasn't really, uh, really solid. So when... We were on longer shots um, or on the jib and stuff like that. We got a little bit more shake than I would have preferred. Uh, It wasn't making the footage unusable, but if it had been a cement floor or something a bit more solid, uh, we probably wouldn't have gotten all that shake. So something to keep in mind for the future uh, when looking at a venue, that may be an issue that you or, you know, we might look at it again. Um, but overall, we we did we had a great time. Um, the the biggest issue I ran into um, I, as the director and camera operator, I wasn't able to watch every shot as it was happening. So there was occasions where some of our camera operators, even though I told them this is the shot I need from you, kind of would wander off and do a different shot. So in the future, I would again make sure that my camera operators knew exactly what I needed from them. Ideally. You would have a multi-monitor display going to you with headsets, uh, being able to talk to your camera operators while the shoot's happening. Again, we didn't have that that equipment, and I didn't have a rental budget, so I was really working with whatever we had. But altogether, it turned out phenomenal. The client was super happy. Right now, we've done a promo video for them, and we're also working on the DVD of it. Uh, you can take a look at the lighting diagrams and the final pro- uh, promo product uh, in the link below. But go ahead and tell us what you guys think. Have you ever tried to do a concert shoot before? Uh, what are some of the secrets that you've discovered? So leave a comment below. Check out the, di- the diagrams on the link. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Want more Next Wave DV in your life? Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube to be notified when the next episode airs. Visit our website for daily posts on the latest digital video news. Like us on Facebook to join the Next Wave DV community. And follow us on Twitter for behind-the-scenes news and pictures.